Good evening. Earlier this week, I said that we would provide clear guidance on gatherings that would keep islanders safe from the risks posed by COVID-19 while still allowing us all to enjoy the Christmas period with family, friends and colleagues. And we're now ready to set out this guidance, which will apply from the 23rd of December to the 5th of January, covering both Christmas and New Year gatherings. Now this guidance applies specifically to gatherings, which means six or more people meeting, and where at least two people are from a different household to you. That could include meeting your neighbours, your wider family or friends. Under this guidance, all outdoor gatherings in public places must not exceed 20 people. All indoor gatherings and those in private gardens must not exceed 10 people. Children aged under three years old do not count in homes and private gardens. And you should attend no more than three gatherings during this whole period. And you should attend no more than one gathering per day. No controlled events organised by businesses, sports clubs or other organisations exceeding these numbers will be allowed during this time. However, there are some exceptions to allow traditional Christmas faith activities to take place. Traditional seasonal gatherings and regular weekly workshop for faith communities will be allowed, but with a limit of 20 congregants plus five celebrants or volunteers, and that's for both indoor and outdoor services. Attending faith and worship events will not count towards your three gathering limit. A small number of organised, risk-assessed events to support vulnerable islanders will also be permitted, limited to 20 people, plus five staff or volunteers, both indoors and outdoors. And I want to remind islanders that this guidance, which is focused on gatherings, does not stop smaller groups from celebrating or socialising together. Socialising as a group of five people or fewer from different households does not count as a gathering and therefore is permitted in addition to the three gathering limit. You are, however, advised to be responsible and to limit meeting in small groups as much as possible and to choose outdoor settings when you do meet up to reduce the potential spread of COVID-19. You should also keep these smaller groups as consistent as possible by seeing the same people keeping to a safe, safe distance of two metres and following all public health guidance. We are a sociable and community orientated island, but for older and more vulnerable islanders, it really is safer to limit the number of gatherings and social groups, especially in indoor settings, where the risk of the virus being passed between people is greater. Now I appreciate this is not an ideal solution, and it is certainly not the Christmas we are all used to. But I sincerely, sincerely believe that this guidance will help save lives as we tackle this challenging winter period and look forward to the spring and the rollout of the COVID vaccination programme. Now I'm now going to pass to the Minister for Health, who's going to clarify in a bit more detail. Richard. Thank you, Chief Minister, for setting out the detail of the guidance and how it has been designed to balance the competing needs of protecting our community's health and giving islanders the freedom to celebrate with their loved ones safely. I know that many islanders are wondering how this guidance will work for them. So let's imagine what Christmas Day may look like for a family of two adults and two children aged five and seven years old. If this family were to attend a Christmas morning religious service, they could do so without the service counting towards their three gatherings limit, thanks to the exception in place. At the service, in addition to the family of four, there could be up to 16 other members of the congregation from multiple households. This would not include religious celebrants and volunteers, of which there could be up to five. If this family then hosts Christmas lunch for other members of their wider family, including two sets of grandparents and an aunt and uncle, with twins aged two, this would be one of their three permitted gatherings, 
and the only one allowed that day. That is because it includes the maximum number of ten people for whom the gathering's guidance applies. The two children aged under three are exempt from the guidance as this meal takes place in a private home. Finally, the family of four on Christmas Day decide to go on an afternoon walk with the next door neighbour who was alone during the day. As a smaller social group of only five people, this does not count as a gathering and does not count towards the three gathering limit. The walk must be at a two metre physical distance from the neighbour in adherence with the safe distancing regulation. I hope, as you can see from this example, that we have allowed as much flexibility into the guidance as possible to allow for Christmas activities many of us would normally enjoy. Islanders who are classed as high risk or plan to meet with those who are at high risk should take extra care to follow public health guidance to ensure the risk of passing on the virus is minimised. Consideration should also be given to minimising gatherings indoors and emphasising outside activity with a small number of non-household contacts. To ensure compliance with the guidance, tomorrow I will sign an order and bring into force legal restrictions on the numbers of people who may gather together. I know this will be difficult for many islanders who had planned on a more sociable Christmas with larger groups, but please remember that the three gathering limit is there to protect the more vulnerable members of our families and in our island. Without these limitations, the spread of COVID-19 could prove fatal to those we love and we want to protect the most. And the impact of uncontrolled gatherings would see our number of active cases rise exponentially. I would also encourage all islanders to keep records of who they socialise with to support the contact tracing team if they are found to be a direct contact of a positive case. And this will help reduce the time it takes to identify and contact direct contacts and improves our capacity to slow the spread of COVID-19. Sadly, those who find themselves in isolation over the festive period must remain in isolation until they have completed the necessary duration. This is not the position we want for any of our friends or family to be in, especially at a time of celebration, but it is regrettably absolutely essential to keep our community safe. And it is all the more reason to follow the public health